Hey, 42 here. Have you ever heard of the world's deadliest fart? No? Well, let me lead you to Cameroon, celebrated for its coffee, cotton, and cacao. Oh, and don't forget its football team, the Indomitable Lions, who've qualified for the World Cup nine times, a feat unequaled by any other African team. Their best performance came in 1990 when they made it to the quarterfinals, only to be narrowly defeated by the Free Lions of England in extra time. England progressed to the semi-finals, only to continue its venerable custom of losing on penalties. But that's a story best left for another time, or more likely, another channel. Anyway, let's get back to that fatal fart. Cameroon has a population of 25 million people and over 250 native languages. But in scientific circles, there stirs a story so surreal, it has eternally solidified Cameroon on the world map. On the 21st of August 1986, in the desolate reaches of Lake Neos in the northwest, there was a natural disaster, or more accurately, a limnic eruption. This catastrophe claimed the lives of around 1,800 people and 3,500 livestock. And even though it was technically a volcanic eruption, it wasn't anything like the kind you and I know. Instead of a spewing torrent of lava and smoke, this eruption materialized as a giant gas cloud. Lake Neos is a deep crater lake located high on the side of an inactive volcano in the Oku volcanic plain and forms part of a 1,600 kilometer chain of volcanoes known as the Cameroon Line. Now, if someone tried to peddle you a property perched on the precipice of a volcano, you'd probably pass it up. Still, the areas around volcanoes are fantastically fertile places for farming, and therefore usually densely populated. Just ask the two million people who now live in the vicinity of Mount Vesuvius near Naples. Because who cares about trifling tales such as the destruction of Pompeii and Herculaneum, when you can cultivate the world's best tomatoes in the rich volcanic soil and make the most divine pizzas known to man? Anyway, you get the point, and sure enough, in 1986, the area around Lake Neos was home to a large populace of people farming crops and cattle. The Bathmen, who have inhabited the area for centuries, were some of the earliest settlers, and as a rule, they only built their houses on elevated ground above a lake and never below it. A tradition rooted in local folklore that describes lakes doing strange things like rising and falling, changing locations, or even blowing up. Scholars speculate these beliefs were born from bygone events and passed down through the type of oral tradition that nobody ever records, but we really probably should. Because if they had, perhaps thousands of lives would have been saved. You see, there was a ticking time bomb about 50 miles beneath the lake, in the form of a silent but deadly magma chamber. Gradually, the magma released gases, including carbon dioxide, which filled the surrounding rock before seeping into the lake itself. This exact process is only known to occur in a few lakes worldwide, but most notably, Lake Kivu in the Democratic Republic of the Congo and Lake Manun also in Cameroon. After traveling through the rock, the gas dissolves into the water. When the lake's waters are stratified and don't mix, a considerable buildup of gas on the lower layers, particularly carbon dioxide, can occur. It can actually sit stably in this state for some time, but a sudden mixing of the upper and lower levels results in a limnic eruption, which is like opening a bottle of champagne. Or for the more lewd learners out there, it's like farting in the bath. This is precisely what happened at Lake Neos. However, we're wind to several weeks before this calamitous combustion, and a chilling sight greeted the locals one morning. All the fish in the lake had perished overnight. Their lifeless bodies were found drifting on the surface. It transpired that the carbon dioxide levels had attained a fatal concentration in the lake's depths, asphyxiating nearly all living creatures within. Then, a few weeks later, came the explosion. And ever since, we've been trying to figure out what had disturbed this deadly carbon dioxide cache. Perhaps it was a rockfall that mixed the water layers. It could have been a minor earthquake or even a small volcanic eruption at the bottom of the lake, even though no tremors were reported by survivors. 
whatever happened, a tremendous amount of carbon dioxide was suddenly released, anywhere between 100,000 and 1 1.6 million tonnes, according to various estimates. Due to the inertia of the explosion, CO2 initially shot upwards at 60 miles per hour. At 9pm on that fateful day, villagers heard a rumbling noise and many emerged from their homes to investigate. They witnessed gas gushing upwards, forming a cloud reaching up to 100 metres. Other survivors described a white mist escaping from the lake. But what goes up must come down, especially when it's carbon dioxide and one and a half times denser than air. Suddenly, the cloud rushed back down to the lake's surface before billowing outwards, like dropping marbles on a pane of glass. Within seconds, the gas cloud spewed from the confines of the lake, rushing down the valley in a wave that was 50 meters high, with frightening speed. As it surged forward, the carbon dioxide forced air out of its path, and as it made its way through the villages, almost all the people in its way lost consciousness. Colourless and odourless, this silent and invisible killer claimed human and animal lives alike, its victims collapsing before suffocating. The carbon dioxide was of a strong enough concentration that it killed not only the people of Lake Neos, but many of those in the Subum, Kam and Char villages up to 15 miles away. In the closest village to the lake, only four escaped quickly enough to survive. Most died in their sleep, but even the so-called lucky few were permanently afflicted with breathing problems, skin lesions and paralysis. There were other volcanic gases present. Survivors recounted the smell of rotten eggs, a sure sign of sulfur dioxide, but it was the CO2 that proved most pernicious. A survivor recalled the scene the following morning. No birdsong or the buzz of insects, only a deathly silence. People and animals lay where they'd fallen. Some survivors took more than a day to awaken. Unsurprisingly, many who did rouse believed it was the end of the world. Scientists from different nations were mobilised, but at first they were all baffled. There were numerous theories going around. Perhaps it was a vicious virus epidemic, but that idea was swiftly dismissed as it didn't quite fit. The most popular view was that a dormant volcano had bubbled and spit poisonous gases killing those around Neos. But the true tale would only unfold in the ensuing months and years, even though a similar tragedy had struck the shores of nearby Lake Manoon two years before, where 37 had died, but those deaths were recorded as unexplained, as the idea of a limnic eruption wasn't yet fully understood. But now, the tragic toll of lost life at Lake Neos compelled authorities to take such events more seriously, and scientists toiled to uncover the cause. One of their conclusions was that this very same tragedy could strike again. So, they devised a plan to prevent this. The team fashioned a rudimentary device to let the gas vent from the lake's lowest depths through lengthy tubes. Initially, the water needed to be pumped up through the pipe, but once operational, the outflow of gas from the ascending water caused a self-sustaining effect that continually drew more water upwards. Similar to siphoning petrol out of a car. <clears throat> Not that I would know, of course. In 2001, the first pipe was installed in Lake Neos, followed by two more a decade down the line. By 2019, however, it was evident that a single pipe was enough to keep the carbon dioxide in check. And so that's what remains to this day, hopefully keeping the residents forever safe from giant explosive wet farts. Thanks for watching.